Hey friends, it's Carly here for Ellen Hudson and today I wanted to share this layered shaker card with you. Now I've made a few layered shaker cards and I've seen some gorgeous ones that other makers have created, but I've never tried it with die cuts that have graduated sizes. So I wanted to test it out with the Essentials by Ellen Essential Circles die cut set. And I love the result. <laughs> now to start, I'm starting with basically a big stack of white cardstock. So I have an A2 card base from 110 pound solar white. I've got four A2 panels from 80 pound solar white, and then one more A2 panel in 110 pound. I like my card base and my card front to be extra sturdy. Now I've picked out five circle dies from the essential circle set, and I'm gonna use the largest one on that A2 110 panel. That will be the front of my shaker card. Now when I put my die down, I'm kind of just eyeballing it, <laughs> but you could totally measure. <laughs> and then I'm using a little low tack purple tape to secure it so I can run it through my die cut machine. Now, once you run it through your die cut machine, you see what a bonus this set is because not only do you get the circles in all the sizes, you get the rings. So those are really fun. I'm gonna set them aside for another card. And then I'm gonna use that card front that I just die cut as kind of a template to help me put my circle die on my next panel. So I'm gonna use the next largest circle on the next A2 panel, secure it with low tack tape again, and then also run it through my die cut machine. And then I'm gonna speed up the next few bits <laughs> because it's the same thing over again. I'm just gonna continue with that same process with the rest of the dies I've chosen. So for each panel I die cut, I'm gonna use it as a template to help place the next smaller die on the next panel, secure it with low tech tape, and run it through the die cut machine. This helps me space all my circles equally, and once I've got all my panels cut, you can see how well that worked. Super easy. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of ink blending to add some color. I'm doing the first bit on my second panel. So remember the first panel is the one that has the biggest circle. That's the front of my shaker card, and I just wanna leave that one white, but I wanna put color underneath it. So I'm just using some worn lipstick distress ink and a blending brush, and then I can kind of put it underneath that front panel again and make sure I have enough ink which I don't, <laughs> and then I can add some more with my blending brush. Once I've got that one good and done, I'm gonna move on to the other panels. The second panel, oh, sorry, this is the third panel, <laughs> and I'm doing card pumpkin. Then on the next one, I'm gonna do crack pistachio, and then finally peacock feathers. And once I've got all of my inking done, I'm going to lay out those panels and add a little bit of clean water splatter just to create texture. So I like to spray the water onto my hand and then kind of <laughs> shake it onto the panels before I use a paper towel to mop up any excess water and ink. Then you can see I've got all of my panels all stacked up. I'm really happy with how these colors look together. It's just bright and fun, and it's gonna look so sharp underneath that white panel and then with the white behind it. But before I adhere them all together, <laughs> I'm gonna use the panel with the largest circle, the cover one that's still white. I'm gonna use it to help me position my stamp. So I've got the panel my Misty. I'm gonna put that hip hip hooray stamp in the middle and then close my Misty lid to pick it up. Then I'm gonna change out my die cut panel for an A2 acetate panel. And then I'm gonna stamp on it and stays on ink, which is kind of like the Sharpie marker of ink pads. <laughs> it's a solvent ink and it will dry and be permanent on that slick acetate surface. But I do recommend cleaning your stamp pretty quickly if you use stays on because it kind of builds up on your stamp. Now I'm gonna set that aside as I've got all of my pieces and I'm ready to glue. Now, normally I'm a dry adhesives kind of girl, like I like double-sided tape a lot, <laughs> but I'm gonna use a liquid glue this time just because it gives you a little more wiggle room to kind of move things around and make sure everything is lined up properly, which is important when you're doing a layered shaker. So I'm adhering that acetate panel to the die cut panel with the largest circle. I'm gonna set those aside and then I'm gonna start adhering the smallest panel to my card front, then the next panel with the next small circle on top of that, and on top of that, kind of so on and so on until I've got all of them, until I've got that red one with worn lipstick. And you can see how good they look, and that glue just gives you time to make sure everything is good and squared up and lined where you need it to be. Now once I have all of my colored panels adhered together and ready to go, I just need to add a little bit of sparkle. So I'm gonna add some clear confetti sequins on top of that and kind of spread them out with my fingers, make sure there's no big stack of them. And then I'm gonna put a little more glue on that as tape panel and that is going to close up my shaker card. 
Now, it's not super shaky. <laughs> they don't wiggle a ton as much as if you had a lot of foam adhesive, but I like it because it kind of keeps the sequins spread out so they're never all bunched up at the bottom. And I just think it looks beautiful. I'm really happy with the result. I definitely recommend trying this shaker card technique to you. You can see more on the Ellen Hudson blog. There's a link in the video description. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.